Hi, we're Jordan and Jim. Two years ago, we left everything we owned and everyone we loved to move to Cornwall and fulfill our dreams. We bought a plot of land and for the last two years have been living on site whilst building our house. Follow our journey as we develop this adventure together, one vlog at a time. <coughs> Adjusting. <laughs> Hello everybody. Today we are clearing this space, which is going to be our kitchen and dining area, but it's just been like a dumping ground for the last few years, or last year, hasn't it? I mean, I've had it tidy quite a few times, but I haven't properly tidied it in a good few months now. So that's today's job, because this is going to be our painting and prep preparing station uh, for our doors and our skirting and architrave that we've bought and that we've decided to prime and paint ourselves because it's a much cheaper to do that so this is going to be the area for that so therefore all of this it gotta go needs to go which sounds like that's the perfect opportunity to start a time lapse right where should i start to him I'd like to be something, can't I? Uh, oh, yeah, you can. All of these lumps of plaster, this is a good place to start. Yeah. Um, I'm, I should be able to. I'm off the bag. That could just get thrown in a pile out the front. Yeah. And they could be made into a pile to go in. The big top of the cave on the bottom. have a slightly different project today. Um, the reason this one's come about is we got prices for skirting and architrave <coughs> for the house and it was gonna cost about 1,100 pounds for just MDF unprimed um, skirt and architrave, nothing special it's not oak it's not hardwood it's it's just primed mdf um now i can buy enough sheets of mdf and then cut them down to size for 360 quid i think it was so you know a massive saving um 
something that I've wanted to buy myself for a little while is a table saw. And that would help me, um, I mean, I mainly wanted it for, you know, just to have in the workshop, do my own little projects and things, but I can use it. I could justify buying it with the, with the saving. Um, Cause I can make all my own, I can rip down the boards and shape my own architraves with it. Cause we're only having something square, like a square profile. See this picture. Um, so, well, I'll show you what I've got. This came up for sale on Facebook. The guy hadn't used it for a good few years, but it runs. It's just got quite a lot of surface rust on the cast iron topper. Um, handles broken on the height adjuster, but it still spins. You see, you spin that bit and the blade starts going down. You can't see it so well because I'm wobbling, but that's the height adjuster. This handle is intact, so that's what it should look like. Um, that that uh, angles the blade, so we can go from a 90 degree to a 45 degree cut and everything in between. Um, it also came with, so it's got a rip fence, um, which sits on. there obviously not like that it attaches to this bar but that gives a um, straight edge to run uh, your work through and it has come with now he never had this set up um, this section and these two pieces and this a couple of bolts but I'm pretty sure that's not all of it and this on the underside has these four spinning wheels and I assume somehow they attach to this track and they sit on this side of the saw and that's a sliding sled um, so if you're cutting something from this side it, it moves with the work rather than sliding the work along the table but I don't know how that's going to go together anyway the guy was selling this for 200 pounds in its current condition because it needs some work. Now these are brand new. This machine with all of that was about 1500 quid. So I think 200 pounds is a um, is a bit of a steal. But today I'm gonna to be cleaning up the top of this, cleaning up that and seeing if I can get it all, um, get it together, get it working, get it clean. So I've been sanding um, for about, I don't know, 20, 30, 50 minutes, no idea, quite a while. Um, I've concentrated on one side. I'll show you what it looks like. So this bit on the left, where's my finger there, has had one go over with sandpaper. And then I thought I'd concentrate on the bit on the right. Um, to show the difference. So that's what it was like. That's what the clean bit looks like now. So with a bit of wax on that, it's good to go. So there's two, or sorry, there's three spots where the rust had actually pitted in quite bad. So it's flat. Um, but it's not perfect and it's never going to be now. Once it sets in like that, it's um, it's game over. You can't polish that out without getting the whole table ground. Um, but for what I need it for, um, that will be absolutely fine. Um, I swapped the handle over from the high rise, from the riser to the angle thing. I've set the angle to 90. I'm very rarely will I be changing it up from that, I don't think. So I've got it set to 90 um, and then put the good handle on the, on the riser for ease of uh, bringing it up or down. I oiled all the mechanism, all these um, 
threaded bars. Um, there's one there, there's another one under there. That's how this tilts and, um, and rises. So I've cleaned and oiled those and they spin freely now. Um, there's something a little bit funky happens when changing direction on that angled one. I can't work that out yet. But as for cleaning, that's where we're at. I've cleaned a lot, lots of cleaning. Um, I'll show you the table. I just started waxing. Um, bear with me. So, that is a hell of a lot cleaner than it was. You can see it's still quite badly pitted on parts of this, but it's flat and it's smooth. And that is more than good enough for, uh, for what I need it for. Um, I've also cleaned up the uh, rip fence and I have the angle guide thing currently in pieces because that didn't slide in the runners it was seized in so this bit runs in there super freely now that um uh, we had to take that out with a hammer yesterday so uh, that's where we're at the uh blade i forget what it's called but that angled piece sits behind the saw blade um that uh that's been all cleaned. And then over here, this was the blade that came in it. Um, you can see this side, tiny bit of surface rust, but pretty clean, nothing wrong with it. It's still sharp, really sharp. That side must have been the side that was sitting out of the top of the saw. So um, that's the bit that's got rusty. So that, must, that would have been in. Like that so that's just been sticking out and you know had the moisture on it so um i'm pretty sure i can clean that up and save it if not i'll buy a new blade but we'll try and not i'm just about to wax the uh the top and polish it um just helps things slide across the surface helps your your, your wood like your work slide across the surface while you're sawing um and then I'm gonna start putting things back together. So it's the next day. <clears throat> I put the saw back together yesterday um, with the extra side panel, blade back in, everything like that. Today, I'm gonna to set up my dust extractor and um, start working out how I'm gonna use this machine to make our skirting board so i'll show you what i'm looking at at the moment got the extra side back on the saw it's all waxed and clean and smooth and lovely and um, i've actually just run one pass through to cut the edge and that was the that's the edge it's left so beautiful square clean cut um now what i'm gonna do is put the guide rail on here, the rip fence, and take a 45 degree um, chamfer off this, and then work out how to put the groove line in um, in this side. This is just to test a bit of scrap MDF um, that came off the lorry the other day when I had the delivery. So I've got a few of these lying around so i can do a few testers and see which uh see which design we like the most
So this isn't, this is only 80 mil high. Our finished one's going to be 150 mil. Um, but, you know, just working out this chamfer. I think that's too big. I think a little bit less than that. So let's test another one. So I've run three tester pieces. I put the same chamfer on this edge of all of them. And I did three different techniques for putting in this shadow groove. Now, that one's just a straight blade. I've seen a few online that were this shape, but after doing the other two, I just don't think that's the best option. There's, like when you're painting that, you're never gonna get nice painted edges, top, bottom, and there without just filling that with paint. I just, I don't think that's the best option. And then I did these two with an extra 45 on them. Now, this one's quicker and shallower because I just have to do one pass. I do it with the blade. So that's, that's the tooth takes out all of that in one go. So we do it with the, with the blade only, you know, that far out of the table straight at the moment but that far out of the table on 45 degree to get that cut now this one the blade sits further out of the table and you have to do one pass and then move the fence and then do another pass in the other direction um, but I think I like this one with the single pass and just the little groove. Um, there's a good chance it'll block up with paint. Whoever's painting it's gonna have to be careful. Um, don't know, maybe we should paint them and test them and see what they look like once they're painted. I don't actually have any primer, so I can't do that today. The other issue with this one is, you can see, that groove on the second pass here is where so I've done I've done uh, that angle first, and then come in and done that angle afterwards. And I was obviously a, I don't know fraction of a millimeter too far out with the blade, so you get this extra line through, which is it doesn't have on that top edge so we'll let Jordan decide when she gets home um, so this ran beautifully I have it hooked up to a extractor you know which goes to there which has this um white thing to the other side of that to the other side of there which sucks the saw straight uh, the sawdust straight out as you're cutting now what i have found um is this is a like a cast iron c shape that clamps onto this to keep this from moving so you you nip that up it doesn't move and it slides now with that tightened and nipped up, this end, great. This end has, I'll try and stay still, a good amount of spring in it. Um, what I tried doing was just clamping that on there, but this edge of the table is a bit, is wobbly because it's not, part of the cast iron top. This is just uh, like a catch panel on the side, um, which doesn't sit straight. I'm gonna have to do something with that. Um, so if that was solid, I could just push that on there and then use a, a clamp. Um, the other option, or the better option, is to have a longer channel that comes to the edge and then have it fixed up this end as well, which is annoying because the idea of these is they're nice and quick to just 
Oops. slide, you know, run your next rip through. But um, this is a older model with slightly older, the modern ones, so I've got a bandsaw over here, which has a newer version of a similar thing. It's like a quick release clamp, so you can slide that like so. Clamp, which squeezes it on the whole thing. And that's not going anywhere. Either side, no movement in it. So ideally, something like that, made to fit that rail and that length of saw. What I've come up with for now, where was I? I was about there, that's where the sawdust is. Tighten that back up, this end. This end is fixed. I took, this is designed to go in uh, this side. And then you can have your work attached to that. Got an angle thing on it, so you can, you know, oh, I wanna 15 degree angle cut on this. 15 degrees, clamp that in, hold the work. Obviously not with one hand, but I'm holding the camera and you run through. What I can do on these, because we're only, uh, we're inside of this rail, we're only cutting small bits of, small rips of timber. What I was doing was sliding that in there, that, that out, and then just twisting that over. And now, that's got no give, so luckily, to keep this square to the blade, that wants to be as pushed as far that way as it can go on its, on its slack, so it's got, you know, that much wobble, to keep it square is pushed tight against that way, which is really good because it means I can do something like this if it needed to go somewhere in between, and not sure how I'd do it because, um, you then have to clamp it from both sides and then there's no way of, you know, getting the, the board through. So this is my solution for now, but that's something I will, um, I'll come up with a better solution at some point in the future. The other job for today is to, uh, oh, nearly drop the phone, camera, um, seal this floor. I have a um, concrete hardener and sealer I've grouted in some of the bigger holes in this floor and I am gonna give it a quick sweep and then um, roller on the, the hard note. It's just a liquid roller it on with a big, uh, like a painter's roller and, a, and an extension too. just editing this video that you've just watched and I realised I didn't finish it. So long story short, I agreed with Jim with the skirting. I preferred the third one with the small 45 angled. Um, yeah, so Jim can get on with that this week. Super exciting. Um, and then I can get on with priming and painting them, which is a huge job. All the skirting in the house is a lot. Um, I don't know if there's going to be a video next week because we're visiting family in Essex um, and I may or may not film. Sometimes I like it, sometimes I just want to see family so I'll see how I feel and then that might be the video for next week. And then when we come back we are cracking on. We've got uh, all of the doors arriving, we've got the skirting board arriving to make, we've got all of the bathroom like shower and um, baths and we've chosen everything and we need to fill you in with that so there's loads and loads of building stuff to do um in a couple of weeks time but yeah thank you so much for joining um i'm gonna leave you with 
the reason why I know you all watch and that's Hagen because he's not been in this video. <laughs> uh, yeah, also uh, comment down below if you want more videos from Jim because personally I love it. Um, he's so good at what he does. He knows so much and he's got so much to share. So comment below to encourage Jim to do more talking on camera because we love it. Uh, yeah, see you in a few weeks time. Bye.